Hey guys, here we get into a video kind of discussing some of the strategies and the tactics that were used in Manny Pacquiao versus Keith Thurman last night. Um, and we're going to look at some strategies from both fighters. Uh, very briefly, some of the, the stuff that Keith Thurman was doing. Um, but more importantly, we're going to be focusing on what Pacquiao did. And then we're going to be focusing on uh, some of the flaws that Kate, Keith Thurman showed that caused the knockdown to happen. Um, and they're going to be technical flaws, things that he can improve on very easily. But um, let's go ahead and get into the fight. So the first thing that happened is you see Manny Pacquiao seeing the jab come out. Look at how he shifts his weight to his back leg here. This is the same motion that you would make if you were throwing a right hook. Now, what happens is after that jab comes, right, Keith Thurman does the right thing. He immediately comes out and wants to control the space between him and his opponent. Now, this is probably the single most important aspect in all of boxing, you guys. The most important. Uh, so he comes out controlling him. And then Manny Pacquiao on his front foot says, okay, let's touch gloves right here. I'm going to feint my jab, right? And now this is a feint, right, or a probe. There's no way this punch is supposed to land. He's just figuring out how Keith Thurman is going to react to it because Keith Thurman doesn't know that Manny Pacquiao can't punch him from that distance, right? Keith Thurman's still going to say, oh, shit, scary, right? Then another one comes, and Keith Thurman controls the glove, and now Manny Pacquiao has established a rhythm, so now he steps on his front foot, and look at how... Whoops. And look at how, after he touches gloves, touches gloves, or whoops, <laughs> I missed it again. Uh, so touch gloves, touch gloves, and now when he goes to touch gloves again, leaning on that front foot, look at how he slips to the inside, right? That's because he's setting up the right hook, and you can see him do it right here again. It's the same motion. Watch his head, watch his body, not his punch, but watch his body. Boom, right? And now, boom, it's the same. At the end of the punch, he's leaning on his, his left leg. So he's looking to set up the right hook off of that jab and off of Keith Thurman's jab. Partly because of the fact that Keith Thurman doesn't use the information that he gets from his feints and his probes and from his, uh, his lead hand here to set up his offense. As you can see, not even getting close to that shot there. But again, Manny Pacquiao looking to control the space and and fight off of Keith Thurman's jab, right? And it's that's looking like what his strategy looks to be. And you can see it right here, one minute into the fight, Keith Thurman looks to control the space. He's going to give him one feint. Then he's going to give him one jab. Pacquiao parries it perfectly, transfers all his weight to his back leg. Boom. And then as he's doing that, he's going to throw the right hook and land a, a shot on Keith Thurman. Now, this is going to take Keith Thurman's lead hand away, and that's going to allow Manny Pacquiao to more effectively set up his offense later. As you see Keith Thurman a little more hesitant, and that allows Manny Pacquiao to start feinting him, as you see here, and allows Manny Pacquiao to start feinting him. Feint, feint, right? Now he starts slipping to the outside, and this is the goal. This is what he wants to do, is he wants to take Thurman's lead hand away, because this is the closest point between uh, Keith Thurman's face and him, is, is uh, the closest point is um, Thurman's lead hand, right? So he needs to take away Thurman's lead hand so he can start slipping to the outside. But Keith Thurman has seen this tactic as well. And like I talked about in the pre-fight, um, I knew he would try that tactic, but Manny Pacquiao has seen this tactic many, many, many times. Juan Manuel Marquez is a much better boxer than Keith Thurman, and Juan Manuel Marquez couldn't get away, from it, away with it easier uh, either. But as you can see, when he faints him, he knows that right hook is coming. Now Keith Thurman knows, and that's going to stop Keith Thurman from being as effective with his lead hand, uh, in spite of the fact that he's very effective there. <laughs> um, fainting, fainting. I think, actually, it does look like he does land that shot, but one of the problems with this kind of style that Manny Pacquiao is looking to utilize, right, is that Keith Thurman is able to get this information from Pacquiao as well, as you see Where is Pacquiao throw that right hand? Well, anyway, you saw when he throws the right hand and he misses, but uh, Keith Thurman gets to use that information as well and say, okay, I just need to be a little slower, right? I need to test him, test the waters, faint, 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 right? Is the right hand coming? Is the right hand coming? And when, when Keith Thurman realizes that the right hand is not coming, it allows him to open up his offense because Pacquiao is so dead set on landing the right hook rather than just fighting his opponent. This is the same problem that Teofimo Lopez had last night or the other night against, um, I don't know his first name, but Nakatani, um, is that he was waiting and he was only looking to use one tactic. Now, again, Pacquiao wants to take away the lead hand, 
So he can start doing this, lean to the outside and sneak that, that left hand in there. But he can see that the, the hook is still coming from Thurman, so he's going to kind of play it down or downplay it and, and not kind of move in with that attack. But again, looking to control him and looking to time Keith Thurman coming in because Keith Thurman doesn't have the best layers. So probe, Keith Thurman's probing. He's like, hey, what are you doing? What do you think about this? And when he steps in, Manny Pacquiao's like, ah, oh, this is what I think about it. I think right hook, right? And that's gonna, that allows him to control the space between him. Um, now, again, more fainting, more probing, more, more jockeying for position, right? Both of these guys are looking to get the other one to commit to an attack before going, um, before committing to an attack themselves, right? And again, Manny Pacquiao doing a good job of feinting, right? Getting him to expose himself so he can land his jab or land his punches over um, Keith Thurman's. And again, boom, a beautiful right hook here. And again, because Keith Thurman has a few flaws. Number one, I talked about in the film study leading up to the fight that Keith Thurman almost always steps with his punches. He also almost always steps with his probes. We can get a look at that here. When he steps here, controlling him, right? Stepping, stepping with his probe here. Again, almost always stepping, even when he's taking a backward step, right? Probe here, right? And now he's going to be taking a step back. He takes a step back before he lets that lead hand go as well. And that puts him in this position here to eat that counter here and to... Whoops, and to eat the other counters as well. Again, stepping with his probes, and then this is the one where he steps with this shot. Even though he's about to let a one-two go, he's still feinting and stepping with the jab, which makes him more predictable, boom, and easy to walk into those shots. Um, again, that's something we discussed in the pre-fight buildup, um, that Keith Thurman has that flaw. And again, stepping here again with this shot as well, step with his feint and gets walked into that shot. Same problem that Amir Khan has. But again, stepping with this shot. And then the more that this happens, the less confident Keith Thurman feels moving into the space between them. And the more times we have scenes like this happening, where neither fighter is doing anything, where there's just a lot of... We're going to go ahead and put it in, in real time just so you can kind of see how quick a lot of this stuff is, right? But boom, a great shot right there. Bam. But again, Keith Thurman stepping and committing with that shot, putting himself out of position, um over and over and over again and Manny Pacquiao looking to wait and counter that lead hand before he starts setting up his offense and that's why we have so many times in the fight where neither fighter looks like they're doing anything and as slowly as Keith Thurman says okay you can have control of that space and he allows Manny Pacquiao to faint here faint here faint here and hide these attacks here faint faint hide these attacks that makes it much more difficult for Keith Thurman to to control him and set up his own offense and again Keith Thurman always stepping with his shots and getting countered. And after so many so many opportunities of that, uh, so many times of the, of the lack of control that Keith Thurman had, that opens up a lot of opportunities for Pacquiao to start doing things like this, right? And opening up opening up his offense and controlling him um, to land his punches. And then again, you know, that was the story of the fight for the first you know six or so rounds. Manny Pacquiao being able to control Keith Thurman um, and faint him, right? And then have a lot of situations like this. Now, this clip is very important here. We have him coming forward, fainting, eating a jab or like a cross kind of shot over the top of his shot. And then Manny Pacquiao feeling comfortable going in, letting off, letting off his own punches, fainting him. And again, Keith Thurman stepping, right? Getting caught with those shots. And now all of a sudden in this exchange, Keith Thurman doesn't feel comfortable fainting or using his lead hand to control the space. And then allows Pacquiao to just start letting his punches go, right? Letting his punches go. Because Keith Thurman doesn't have the control over him that he needs with his lead hand. He's not able to maintain or control the space. And then again, you know, Manny Pacquiao sitting. You can see him waiting here. Waiting, right? Catch, right? And you can see him, his little move right here. That's his parry, right? If the jab was going to come, he's going to parry it with his left hand. And then his left, his right hook is going to come around the guard right there. Um, but again, Keith Thurman having a hard time letting his punches go. But Manny Pacquiao doing so much waiting that he gets fainted into oblivion here. And then we have a lot of scenes in the fight like this where 
He's waiting. Keith Thurman's fainting. Keith Thurman's fainting, probing, lets a shot go. Keith Thurman fainting here, fainting. And he's able to find a time where Pacquiao's not looking to counter him with the hook because he's made it so obvious that the hook is coming that he's able to let his punches go. Now, one of the big problems that Keith Thurman had in this fight is his defense, right? This right here, Pacquiao shoots the jab. Then when he shoots the left hand, Keith Thurman ducks into the left hand, right? But he doesn't transfer his weight, right? He just kind of ducks away. And now his, his hips, his shoulders are no longer under his hips. And now he has no way to move around his body and control his body. So he winds up getting stuck on the line, right? Rather than seeing the jab come here, right? And then slipping to the outside of Manny Pacquiao and getting away from the left hand, he slips to the inside, right? And then he can't get away from the next punch, right? which is the left hook or the right hook over the top, even though it misses, that's not the point. It's that, that Manny Pacquiao has, or Keith Thurman has put himself into a position where he's not able to transfer his weight as often as his opponent. And because of the fact that he's not able to do this, because he's, he's stuck on the line and he's moving essentially back in a straight line, he's not able to defend himself at the same speed at which Manny Pacquiao can attack him. And that puts him into this, this really awkward position where he's just shuffling off the line. Now, that's exactly what happens here when he gets knocked down in the first round. So the jab comes, right? And notice when he, he pulls away. Actually, let's put this in slow-mo because it's so hard. But the jab comes, and now he doesn't parry it. He doesn't transfer his weight. He just rocks back. And now his weight is not centered with him. It's, his weight is not being pulled with him. Now when the left hand comes, again, he's just shuffling and he's just moving off the line, but he's not transferring his weight. His hips don't come with him at all. And that allows Manny Pacquiao to transfer his weight. Boom. Once, twice. Now he's transferring his weight to his front leg. And then a third time back to his back leg when he transfers, even though he's doing kind of a, um, even though he's kind of shifting, boom, boom. And then he's shooting off the, the right, the right foot onto the left foot. But the punches keep coming. Every time he transfers his weight, boom, boom, boom. But if you watch Keith Thurman's hips, throughout that entire engagement, they're in the same spot. Let's go ahead and put it in slow-mo, a little slower. Boom. But Keith Thurman is not moving anywhere because he's not transferring his weight, right? He's just taking a step or hopping and moving in the air. And that takes all of his ability to control his own weight uh, away from him. And that puts him into a lot of positions like this. And we'll just watch the other one again, right? So the counters start coming, boom, boom, he ducks. And now he has to move off the line and follow his hips, but he doesn't shuffle or pivot at all. He just kind of comes straight up and start continues circling. But again, you can see it, you know, and even though Pacquiao misses a lot of these shots, right? The opportunity for him to land them is there because Keith Thurman can't get his head off the line. And again, that's exactly why he gets knocked down here. Instead of slipping the jab or catching it and then slipping the right hand, he just moves moves back in a straight line and gets caught. But um, anyway, it was actually a great fight, you guys. I really enjoyed re-watching it and taking another look at it. It was a lot of fun. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out foutsboxing.com where I'll be writing boxing articles. Um, most notably about the kinds of fights that I don't have time to cover and that I don't have time to do film study. I'll be doing um, articles on them um, just because it's a lot of work to do film study and a lot of time. And uh, yeah, but anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, sign up for the newsletter. And um, yeah, thanks guys.